Chama wing apple. Chama chest chame. Nutada wings, Tasha She. Uh, welcome, friends and family. My name is Tasha She, and we're about to get into this video about the origin of Christmas being American Indian. Okay. And that holiday is what we call Nakomos. And in the Pawtan language, we say, Winka Nakomos, which means happy holidays. So grab a pen and a pad and let's start digging turtles. The American Indian Origin of Christmas. In 1823, writer and professor Clement Clark Moore wrote a poem called A Visit from St. Nicholas, which history credits for creating the modern image of Santa Claus, the hefty old man with the beard and red suit. Moore also claimed to have authored Towards the Night Before Christmas, which laid the foundation for how most people celebrate Christmas today. The stories were a present for Moore's daughters, and allegedly the St. Nicholas character was based on a portly, recumnant Dutchman in the neighborhood. Moore was credited as the creator of the jolly, plump old man in the red suit and sleigh. But was Christmas solely created that way? Or was it also inspired by the local American Indians that have been practicing a similar tradition of elves and red clothing and gift giving for hundreds of years prior to European colonization? Now we all know about the Roman holiday of Saturnalia, which occurred on December 6th and was pushed up to December 25th to go with the winter solstice and convert pagans to Christianity while keeping their old beliefs. This holiday looked nothing like the modern Christmas and was more like a wild frat party where people gambled, shrieked naked, and assaulted women. But not everyone agreed with Santanelia among the Romans. And one of the most famous Romans who disagreed was Seneca the Younger. He was a philosopher and he wrote in one of his letters that during that holiday he would stay up in the house in the study while everybody else in the household celebrated. So it wasn't something that everybody participated in, but those who wanted to be a part of the degenerate activities were out in the streets doing their thing. But I also wanted to point out the name Seneca. And Seneca is an Iroquois word and an Iroquois name. It's also found um, in Algonquian families as a name as well. We have Wahan Seneca, right? Seneca. It's just pronounced a little slightly different in Algonquian. And the name Seneca is taken from the name of one of their, the Seneca people's actual village called Old Seneca. Seneca people actually call themselves Onandawaga, meaning the people of the mountains. So my question is, how does the name Seneca, which is essentially Iroquois or uh, used in the woodland uh, tribes, how does that get over to Rome to the point where there's a philosopher, Seneca the Younger and Seneca the Older, his father, with this name and I'm pretty sure that there's other people who were not famous who has the same name so how do they get a Seneca name if they're in Rome you really have to ask these questions Yule comes from the dramatic people of Europe that used the 12 days after the winter solstice December 25th to celebrate the god Odin and the harvest this is where the 12 days of Christmas come from. There's also Center Claus or Swarty Pete, Black Pete, the dark skinned Dutch guy with the sack that climbed down chimneys to give gifts to well behaved children, based on a melanated chimney sweeper in the Netherlands. 
And yes, they still wear blackface to play Swarty Pete. In the eastern woodlands of North America, the tribes aboriginal to the area had a holiday that was very similar to Christmas, named the Comos by some of the people. This was a holiday, a Thanksgiving, for the mystical little people that lived in the forest, which were called Nokomos by the Algonquin and some Iroquois speaking people. Other tribes called the mysterious little people water babies, payasa, monkey people, woods elves, fastachi, black imps, lost elves, Lampiquin, Cannibal Dwarves, Miko Wisong, Ninipi, Mango Games, Gahogas, Atosi, Half People, Kobe, Anukasha, Squant, Akiki, Nani he or Nanya he Puk Wiggies and Wild Indians to name a few. Today those beings would be called fairies, gnomes, or elves. The details about them slightly vary between tribes, but most believe that they are a benevolent being unless provoked. They are magical and are considered harmless tricksters for the most part. Sometimes they help people, but all are not good. Just like with humans, and some are known to steal children or sabotage people. A lot of the modern attributes for the Santa character came from the little person that the indigenous people named the holiday for, Nakomo. And his wife, Mrs. Claus, is based on the American Indian stories of Granny Squant. American Indians even wore the fur trimmed hats that Santa is famous for. Now let's get into these hats that we see on these maps and other places of these American Indians wearing the Santa Claus hat. And these pictures were drawn before the 18. 30s and 50s when this um, Santa Claus story by Moore became popular. Now these hats are fur trim hats. Sometimes they're red, sometimes they might be blue or green, different color, but essentially it's the fur lined or fur trimmed hats that look exactly like the Santa Claus hat. And they aren't seen worn by other people and other countries like that before uh, this uh, this twist the night before Christmas story, which he claims he took a lot of it from this Dutch man. Well, he claims it's just based on how the Dutch man look, but also the Dutch have, like I mentioned before, have the story of Swarty Pete. So you really have to put two and two together. How can we have so many elements of American Indian culture and our holiday Nokomos within this holiday Christmas if there's no influence at all. And the man, he lived in America in the Lenape territory. So he would have contact with those people that lived close to him and he would see what they're wearing and uh, how they celebrated things and um, how they did things. And the things that those people did were done for hundreds and possibly thousands of years before European contact and colonization. Fur trimmed or red socks or stockings were also hung by the familiar or clan house fireplace. Quote, our Santa is a venerable spirit believed to dwell among the evergreens. It is he who guides hunters and fishermen to game and leads forgers to productive berry patches 
and abundant tasty greens from the woods and meadows. His name is Nakomo, which also means feasting and dancing. The winter solstice time of giving is called Nakomo. One of the favorites of Indian children is Granny Squinton, who is one of the many little people, Muskio Wesog, who are sometimes seen for just a moment as they go about their business. As children, we were told that if we couldn't finish a meal, we should take the remains out away from the home for the little people. Usually a chipmunk, a bird, or a squirrel found it first, but it was always fun to think that one day we might just see one of the little ones, or even Granny Squinted herself, if we were partially well-behaved and respected our elders." Unquote. From the series, Nipmunk Ways, Blackstone Valley Register newspaper. On this holiday, American Indian people will gather with their families and have a big harvest event full of gifts and stockings as well. They would leave little bundles in the bottom of hollowed out trees for the Nokomos, and they would have presents that are homemade or they trade for items to give to their family and friends, similar to modern gift exchange parties. They would hang up little stockings with gifts in their homes for the Nokomos, very similar to how we do in modern Christmas. Nokomo in the Algonquin language literally means I give away. Those that had the most would give to those that had the least until everyone was equal in the community. This is where the ideas of Toys for Tots, Turkey Drives, and other charitable events come from. We roasted chestnuts by an open fire, and Holly was in the home, which are both native to the Eastern Woodland area. And we can't forget the deer and the dog sleds. It is not certain if there was a tree inside or not, but we definitely had gifts available in our homes for the people that we loved. People would have many gifts for everyone and they would try to outdo each other with how many gifts they could give or how good the gifts were. There was also a grand feast and powwow to commemorate the holiday, being that it was the last of the 13 Thanksgivings for the last harvest of the year. This Thanksgiving of Nokomos commemorated the coming together of the community that relied on each other to survive for the upcoming winter. Many of the games that American children play on field day, like tug of war and foot races, were played at this powwow and come from American Indian culture. The women from each household would bring a dish to the communal table for the event, giving us the basis for modern potlucks. The men met in sweat lodges to cleanse and give spiritual thanks to the Creator. The men also made sure that the single mothers' homes were repaired and that their children had gifts because the holiday was about being selfish and making sure that everyone in the community was equally taken care of. Here are the three principles of Nokomos. Respect for the ancestors, the community, the seven future generations, and self. Social justice, sharing resources as a community, sustaining the community, being thankful for what we have as a people. And those are the principles of Nokomos. And it would be great if we pass these on to all the children and have everyone take part in these principles during this time of year or during the whole year. Now, till this day, certain Eastern Woodland tribes still celebrate the Comos by giving out gifts, especially to needy families. As you can see, American Indian cultures and traditions have made a major impact on the modern holiday called Christmas. 
But the fact of this is hidden from the world and even some tribal American Indians don't know about it or share that information with the public. So the next time someone questions you about giving and receiving gifts around the end of December because they claim it's a quote unquote European holiday or that you are participating in systematic consumerism that corrupts the community, tell them about Nokomos. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel, like, and please share this very important video out so everyone knows the truth about Christmas and the American Indian origin. And the power to language to say goodbye, we say Anna. So, Anna.